Hello, wrestling friends. I'm Matt Kuhn, and welcome to the first episode of Gentleman Villain with William Regal. And without further ado, here's who you came to listen to, his lordship, the Blue Blood, the Kamish, and the current leader of the Blackpool Combat Club in All Elite Wrestling, the gentleman villain himself, William Regal. Welcome to the world of podcasting, Mr. Regal. How Hello. excited are you to get started? Oh, giddy as a kipper I am. I'm, that's something my grandmother used to say through her gin-sodden breath all the time to me. Yes, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call myself out straight away. Um, the podcast people, I'm going to put the blame on them, haven't sent me the background that I need. I'm in my lizard room, which is incredibly hot, so if I start to leak... Um, Please excuse me. I'm, I, I probably look very disheveled by the end of this. And um, I, I have no clue what I'm doing. So if I'm looking not at the camera, that, that's my fault. It, 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 for those watching, um, I'd suggest probably the best thing you can do from now on is just to actually listen to this and not look at me. <laughs> Start to sweat and, 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 and see a, an old man just get older by the... Because let's face facts with me now. I'm 54. In a, in a very short time, um, I, I'm far, <laughs> I've lived a hard life I, and uh, and I've enjoyed it every, you know, most of it, 99% of it. Um, I'm far more than middle-aged. So every day is just a bit closer to death for me now. So um, it, it, you, you can watch me actually wither away if you, if you like such gruesome things, but otherwise just best listening to my wonderful voice. Yes. Well, we're all excited to have you here talking yes. about your oh, career you. talking about everything you've been doing and what you've been doing lately with the blackpool combat club is probably one of the most exciting things in wrestling how much fun has it been for you to go through with this faction or whatever you want to call it the whole wheeler yuda thing how much fun has it been for you to be involved on screen again it's been wonderful absolutely incredible the only problem is and this is some the big people listening to this of my age, you know, you hear these things when you get older about how quickly time goes. The time goes by so quickly and I haven't really had time to catch up with it. And I probably won't until it's all over with. And then I will actually get one day to sit and, and sit down and watch it all and go, how incredible, you know, and, and relive a lot of the feelings that are just coming and smashing me in the face very quickly. All these incredible feelings of, of excitement and, and the adrenaline and the energy and, and the how how brilliantly this has played out in the last few weeks. It seems like a few weeks. It's been a couple of months now. So I'm enjoying myself immensely and, and getting to be the culmination of 50, nearly 54 years now of of whatever I've, I, I turn into when I go on screen, which is bits of all kinds of stuff that I'm sure we'll get into over over the, the course of this podcast. But I, I just go out and do we, what is now William Regal, which is, it can come from anywhere and there's no rhyme or reason to it. And I just, my brain fires off in different directions and I can just be me and be this thing, this creation. And I've got these incredible talented people with me and I get on with them all and it, it's I'm in a new company that's very exciting and I, I'm so, sort of still I, I don't is it sort of like can't believe that I'm in it if anything that's that's what I'm feeling at the moment I'm I'm sort of this is all so it hit me so quickly and so it's happening and it's so well just to watch it unfold but there's also a part of me like I don't feel like I'm in it, if that makes any sense. It, because it's surreal not, to you. It's, it's surreal, surreal to me. That it's yes, it's it's a surreal thing. I'm I'm sat sometimes at commentary and I'm watching this stuff go on, and then I, I, I'm sort of having a split second in my brain going, "Oh, you're actually a part of this. You're getting to be a part of this. Oh, right. You, you know, there's those kind of feelings going on. So I'm enjoying it immensely." Well, of course, we are here to talk about something that happened a couple years ago is you seeing AEW emerge from the vantage point of working at NXT. But mm. just one more thing I want to bring up. Uh, recently on AEW, of course, when Moxley or Yuta or uh, Danielson 
are on TV wrestling. You're usually doing commentary. You uh, you made you had a little fun at our expense. You tried out a little American accent recently. How long have you had that? Oh yes. <laughs> I don't know. I just so uh, picked up. I've had this sort of a thing for the last 29 years that I've been here that I've had to put up with so many people who think it's okay to come up to me and start talking in a British accent. Right. And they're all, and they're, and they're the, always wrong. It's terrible, right? It's terrible. Diabolical. And this, it must be their party piece or something, but there's a good one in 10 people decides to think that it's okay to talk to me in an in 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 English accent. Or, and so I've sort of had this. I remember once there was one of the, the creative people in WWE said to me, can you do an American accent? Because his idea was only his idea. He didn't last long there. But his idea was to have change of character of me to, to make me American. And I was like, that doesn't make sense whatsoever. Um, and it was one of the few times that I actually said no to anything. Um, and I don't know how far it had gone, but I was like, no, why would I? But I watch, I've watch. i been watching, you know, you grow up in England, you watch nothing but American shows and films and, and stuff. So that just came out the other week. I, I don't know. I, I don't think about what I'm going to say before I go out there. And it just came out of me and I it was fun. So, Well, that's yeah. part of getting older and having the experience you have is that it allows you to be more natural it allows yes. you to take those years of experience and truly just be yourself on screen. Is be it myself, easier, yes. Is it easier for you than it's ever been to do that? Yes, yes. It, it, it's got to a point now where I... And I have really have no idea where I'm going with any of this stuff sometimes. I shock myself some of the things that... Come, not shock myself, but I'm like, where did that come from? Why did I say that? But, you know, that it's just... It's very similar if you for people who are older or wish to go back and look, and I'm not saying go back and look at me because I'm really not, but there was a time in WCW where I sort of changed into the Lord Steven character. And mm -hmm. I was trying to figure my own stuff out. And there were so many influences from different wrestlers, different uh, entertainers in Britain, things from movies and, and stuff. And, and this is a lesson for a lot of people that, if you're into, if you are a professional wrestler, a sports entertainer, whatever you want to call it, don't just look to the world of wrestling for your ideas because you never know. You've got to keep your eyes open all the time. And because you never know when, and because if you do, things will just go in. Sometimes they'll go in and make a big difference to you because they'll give you an idea to, to try to create something out of it. But if you keep closed off to wrestling, you'll find that most people have done everything. Everything's been done in wrestling. But I, as a youngster, was fascinated with the world of entertainment, and British entertainment, because that was what was on TV when there was three channels when I was a child. In, in, in right. So wrestling and entertainment were things that, that I, I didn't watch any other sports. I had no interest in that. It was just entertainment. So I have all these influences of different comedians and, and, and entertainers and little nuances and stuff. And so they just became a part of whatever I was doing. Sometimes it was thought about a lot and I'd take certain little, at certain at times there'd be certain people that I would base certain things on and I'd find that they'd work in my act. And then other times it, it was just became a, a free for all of all these things. And now I'm at a point where I'd have to probably sit down and, and analyze something closely. Where did that bit come from? Oh, that's just something of mine. But, oh, wow, that's something that, I don't know, Kenneth Williams, which is a, a British, incredible British uh, actor, somebody I, I used to watch a lot and study a lot. That's something that he did, you know, 50 years ago in a film that I've watched. And these things just come out at me now. So that's, that's it. But if you're a wrestler, uh, or any any kind of antenna. If you don't it, open your eyes to the world, you, you're missing out on a lot of things. Because sometimes it's just one thing that can set you off to to, to change your entire career uh, and, or get noticed. Because we can get into that in a, in a different episode. But 
you know, being able to talk is something that can get you noticed very quickly above probably anything else. Um, just being a, having a look at having a, a certain mannerism can get you noticed. All these things count. And so you have to keep your mind open. Why we're on that subject, uh, it's what, another thing that listeners are going to have to put up with. You think you were going to get into these topics, but it sets me off on, on, on ideas. You've got to really keep your, 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 your eyes open and your mind open, but also about experience. If you're a young wrestler, there's two ways you can look at this, or any wrestler, and it, you can start today. If you've been doing this 20 years, start today. You can look at things in, in two different ways. You can either sit and whine and moan about it, or you can go, what can I take from this? And I found that for whatever reason, that was my ability in this job that has made me last this long. I never, I, even if it was a bad experience, I used to think, what can I take from this? Not, oh, this is wrong. Right. And if you look at this and go, what can I take from this? Whether it's, I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to treat somebody like that. I, I know not to do that again, or I'm going to avoid doing this. You learn it. If you're, oh, this is terrible, this is rotten, this is this is crap, I'm not going to do this, you're just shutting your brain off. But if you see something, and, and it becomes a habit, but if you have that open-mindedness to everything, you have no idea what you're going to you retain, and it can be useful to you. And if it's not useful to you, it could be useful to somebody you can pass this on to. But just closing your mind off to it, and that's why I'm very different to a lot of people. And this podcast is probably going to be very different. I'm not of the, this is, well, back in my day, this is wrong, this is right, this is, sure. no, it's it's all right if it works for your audience or if it manages to get you, to get you noticed. Because that's the only thing that matters if you're a talent is number one is getting hired and keeping the pe people who are paying you happy whether they like you or not, as long as they're paying you, that's number one. And number two is connecting with an audience. And if you keep an open mind to that, you are going to probably have more of a chance of getting by. And and, and just to finish this off so we don't get too far into this, because if you keep notes of this, we can expand on this as we go on. For sure. If you're given anything as a talent, give it all you've got. I have a saying that I used to I tell anybody that gets to know me, just make it work. Just try and make it work. If you just try and make it, any, and it doesn't matter, matter how preposterous anything may be, if you just try and make it work, 99% chance that it will work. If you go in there with, oh, this is rotten, this is no good, I, I don't get it. Absolutely. There's a good chance it's going to be rotten. So just while we're on that, those things have come to mind. There we go. There's a little bit of advice for you. Now let's carry on with the subject. Well, this is our thing. It's going to drive you mad, Matt, because I'm going to. We never. We, these subjects you start with, we're probably only going to get to two questions in, and then because we, we'll fill <laughs> up this time with me, with my with my wrestling brain going a thousand miles an hour. Right. Well, you can tell, being someone who teaches for a living, I teach music. You can tell that you're a teacher. You're always. By the way, you've mode. got a lovely voice. Do you know? Oh, that? Thank, thank you so much. You, you do. It's it's, it's 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 a very it's one of those commanding. It's a very Orson Welles like commanding voice. Orson, yes. I love I love the War of the Worlds Orson Welles reference. And you, uh, my friend, are always in teacher mode. You know, I watched Breaking Ground recently, and you are someone who is. You were always in teacher mode, and the two things you kind of said just. Make I don't it know work. about always, but what, what a great concept that is. Uh, just make it work because you might as well. Because yes. mindset is everything. And everything. Also, um, what can you learn from this experience? What can you take from this experience? How can you make an experience work for you? Is such a great advice in life, but also with all these people that you coach, which was one of your jobs in NXT, uh, especially at the time of. Um, aw launching uh you were your your mm. technical role was on-screen general manager and as well as the director of talent developmental and head of global recruiting what did that mean what what did your job entail uh in early 2019 late 2018 okay so well let's start off with the job title uh sure the 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 um 
global recruiting, yes, that was my job. Um, when I was asked to have that job, um, Triple H asked me, and as far as I know, I was, uh, I'm sure there's obviously people that are completely higher bracket knew about the, the beginnings of, of what was going on. But I, I think I was the first person that was asked by Triple H to be a part of what became NXT. Uh, and my job was to find the best wrestlers that were out there or the wrestlers that would fit into the system. Uh, as far as talent development, director of talent development, that was a made up job title because I was asked to come up with a job title and I, I couldn't because I, <laughs> there's no real job title for, and you'll hear this a lot, but I just do me. Right. I just do William Regal or whatever people are calling me at the time, which is I've been fortunate enough to be born at the right time to be around the greatest European wrestlers that I could have ever been around, which ended up taking me on a career around the world from 20 to 24, um, which four years goes past very quickly. Now, in those days, that seemed like a, a full a career. If I'd have finished at, at 24, I would have had a, a incredible career because I had people um, that took me in and got me into different countries and, and I experienced when there was wrestling all over the world, not just one or two nights when there was full running companies all over the world and you had to be of a certain standard. And so to be around all these people um, and I've had all these experiences, good and bad, but I've come through it with an open mind to everything. And so I just do me and I know the things I'm good at and I know the things I'm not good at. And I'll just openly tell you what I'm not good at. Don't need to now because it's a lot of things, but it's experience. And because I've lived through a lot of experiences, I can help a lot of people if they're, if they're willing to listen as far as mostly not what to do. It, uh, and sometimes it's what to do, but it's not what to do because I've made a lot of mistakes right. in my life. So this job title, it ended up me sort of getting i was given this job title they, they they ended up making a job title up for me and that was it so really that was how i ended up with that job title so the, there we go the, the 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 and it was nice that they gave me you know i i, I didn't expect the all that grand it's a grand sounding job title i just did me and I, I went out and I looked at wrestlers and I and I, I do have somewhat of an ability to see who is going to be good or bad um, or even the because the, I wasn't good at all in my first few years and because of the right people I, I, I knew um, that, so, that I, I got to know that gave me opportunities or taught me or spent a lot of time with me I slowly got to a, 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 to be a better wrestler and I can see those same things. And sometimes it's, it, it might take these people two or three years or the company doesn't need them at the moment or, or, and, and me going off whatever orders I had about getting certain people or how many people we could have and, and different things. And, and, and it just went on from there. So it, the job, was just me being me, which I've always done because if it wasn't for the people in Europe that did that for me, especially in Britain, I wouldn't be here today. So I've always tried to give back. Once I thought I was okay at this from probably being, and I thought I was, I was in the right position to be able to give back probably from about 21 to two onwards, um, which sounds very young, but I started full time at 16. Um, so it, it I always felt like if it wasn't, I wouldn't be there. I wouldn't have got to 21 without people give, helping me and some of the best people ever helping me in, in, in my part of the world, um, which is another podcast. But they, I always felt like and that's how I, I got my first initial uh, part with, with Triple H. 
he came to WCW. I said to him, I could, I could see somebody who, who was talented and young. I mean, he's only a year younger than me, but hadn't been in the job as long as me, hadn't done as much. And I'm just like, well, do you want to come and train together? And we dr- drove together and he used to come and eat, a, you know, my wife would cook for him. And it, we just became, and, and I've done that for a lot of people because people did it for me. Did you guys and, connect at all in WCW before? Yes, that's where we, yes, that, that was, that right. was how we, we connected. He came to WCW and straight away, I, I just went up straight away and, I know what it's like to be a foreigner. Can you even right. say that anymore? I know what it was like to be a foreigner going to a foreign land. Right. So I know I also know what it's like to be a talent going into a different company. So I'm very kind of, welcoming. Welcoming kind of, to people. I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Were you did you both feel like you were kind of out of place in that sense? You were a foreigner. No, I wasn't. No, I because diff- I'd been I'd been there for a, 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 nearly a year okay. by then. But and Triple so H I, was very new to the business, right? Very new, yes. And so, I, as I would with anybody, you know, like my first day in America, the first person that I saw, because I got there early to a show, Mick Foley came up to me. And Mick Foley walked in and introduced himself. Then Brad Armstrong did. Then, so that's just what decent people did. Decent people did that. And I like to think that I was one of those people. So the first day I met him, it was... Hello, how are you doing? Do you need anything? I'll, uh, but what do you need? And and it went from there. And to the fact that we ended up going to the, the power plant on any day off that we had, and we would train together. And he, not just not just training with me, he would train with Terry Taylor and and, and Jody Hamilton and, and and people whoever else was there. But I would get in the ring with him because I knew all this different style of wrestling. So I taught him all that. Not that he ever needed it in his career. But I, I was I was actually happy that I had somebody to pass on some of this stuff because I thought that old style was going to die out. Um, other people ended up taking it, Daniel Bryan being one of them, and popularizing it and, and doing other things. But that was how we connected. So we were friends from there, and then we, we went. Uh, we should have been a tag team together. We, we were a tag team together, but we should have. There was there was a point where we were the, the original Blue Bloods were, right. were myself and. And, and 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 H, and they were going to put Sherry Martel with us, but then he got the offer. His contract was up to go at WWE. He talked to me about it. I actually there was a bit of an offer for me at the time to go, but I signed. I had a guaranteed contract with WWE and WWE were uh, sorry with with WCW. This is ninety five, I believe, or ninety end of ninety four. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Some of the years go like. Sounds right. But I, I, I had a, I had a guaranteed contract with WCW, uh, and they were very good to me. And they were also getting me um, visas and green cards for my family. So I said, no. What you need to do is go to WWE or WWF at the time, because what he needed was what I'd had for the last ten years. He needed to work two hundred plus days a year. Because he had all the, the, the skills set there, but you get better by wrestling a lot. And you you find out what you're good at, what you're bad at. You make mistakes. You, 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 you rectify those problems. You try and work on them. And just the experience makes you a better talent. So he went. We always kept in touch and so forth. And, and, and I know we've gone on a long topic there, but sure. that's not... That's just one instance of me doing that with a lot of people. And that's what led me to get in this job, this grand title of a job that I just thought, no, I'm just doing me. <laughs> All I'm doing is me, but it, it's I've got this grand job title now. Well, it was not because there's a lot more people that came into my life over the years who would come and ask me, whether and a lot of it through being extras or just me knowing people. Um, and so all of a sudden I'm in this position and I've got this job title. And that's really how, how it all started. But as far as the actual job title is because they couldn't put a uh, director of being William Regal. Right, right. A director of being William Regal. And it sounds yeah. like your longstanding friendship and relationship with Triple H puts you in that position where you were free to be the director of William Regal. And um, um, free to be with with whatever else you know, comes along with whatever the company needs. And and right. 
uh, 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 which is that there's an interesting, I'm going to say this now, so I don't forget to say it later. There's an interesting tale here in many ways because it ties into what, what we're doing now. So my first the actual day on the job, my first day as the, and I wasn't even, I didn't have the title then. This was the first day that I was told by Triple H, you're in charge now of making, taking care of all the wrestlers who gets hired. Even the people who were doing that at the time didn't know. Right. right? <laughs> right. But he, he knew, already knew that he was moving into a different position. And I got to look after um, that. And my first day was after SummerSlam. And I, I'm sorry, it's, it's, I don't know, 12 years ago. I, but my, the first people on the, the tryout, um, when I say tryout, there was the group of extra talent that came for the that get brought to every show and part of that was the young bucks and i liked them straight away and they had a great few days we had a great few days together they, they had i talked to them a lot they had some incredible matches in the afternoon in fact i put them on with the usos to have a tag match i believe on the monday of Roar. I, I, I could, it was either the Monday or the Tuesday. Maybe it might might have been SmackDown, and they absolutely tore the, the with the two teams tore yeah. the place down. So um, that's probably something that the fans would love to see. That I saw it in the afternoon, and and I was raving about them. I'd been told a few things. Now I, I could have some of these things wrong, but there was a few guidelines, and the guidelines were. We don't like to hire anybody under 20 something. And I can't remember if it was 22 or 25. Right. And the reason being, it's very hard for them to get, they can't even rent you a rental car. It was something to do with rental cars. Right. Now I, I'm getting told quite a few, you know, I'm just hearing bits and bat, little bits of information from people. And I could have this completely wrong, but this is what I remember. And so, Again, I learned this, and I, I know their story. We've talked a little bit that they'd already, and, and, and I've heard different people tell me that know them far better than me. They'd already made, made their minds up they were going to Ring of Honor. They didn't really care about this gig. But I liked them. But I thought, just looking at them, they were like 18 and 19. And so after spending the, the two days or three days with them, whatever it was at the time, they went on the way. And it wasn't until after, and this was a while after, that I found out that they were older than what they were. Now, I know they've got stories about certain things that happened that, that weekend, but I don't, I don't know anything about any of that stuff because I'm not of any kind of, never was of any kind of pack mentality. I make my, my, my own mind up. I'm a grown man, and I've been a grown man since I was a teenager. I had to be in my world. I don't listen to gossip. I don't do pack mentality about turning on people i find out for myself if i like you uh, unless you do something for uh, then some reason for me not to like you i don't care what anybody else says it's how me and you get on personally and so i heard some stuff it's it's none of my business if i'd have known that they were the age they were i would have tried really hard to try to get them right on that weekend wow. because it was a it was just, and what I, what I was actually thinking as I was watching them, oh, in, in two or three years when they finally get to that age, I also knew the experience would, I saw what, what they had and the fire they had, and I knew somehow they'd do well for themselves. And I was like, right, in, in a few years, when they get to the age, whatever this age I had, and again, I can't, it, it's whatever was in my mind on, on the first weekend of the job or the first few days of the job, Oh, I'll keep an eye on them because I like them and they'll be perfect in how well, they've gone out and really worked hard and hustled and done all their thing. And then as a new generation of wrestlers, will we'll, we'll be copying them and, and trying to, to do that. But they'll probably tell you as well, you know, they, they had to fail, you know, they've figured it out. So they, they, they're going to have different stories to me of how they made it to their world. But if you think it's going to be easy, there's no easy way. They've had to 
work hard to get to their world. So we we all, all of us in this job, have to work hard and figure out what we have to, how what gets us to the to the to the game we want to play. Well, so after yeah. this new world that we 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 we, we go in into. In a couple of years, when they get get a bit more, you know, look like they're a bit older, and because there were certain things we started off with NXT with, so I suppose I can. I'm going to say this, so you know, I, I asked Triple H, "What's your vision on this?" And we were both watching um, different things that were on HBO, and I believe, I believe, and I could be wrong here, I believe it was Boardwalk Empire at the time believe that was what we were watching and he he said to me i said what's your vision for this new whatever we're going to do he said you know when you watch one of those great shows like boardwalk empire or sopranos or all these incredible dramas and, and so he said you can have a bit of everything in that you can have some you can have really serious stuff you can have a bit of funny stuff you can have you know what incredibly it's all well done he said well that's my, the, the vision of what I want this to be because wrestling can be all kinds of things um, but he said if you watch any of those shows you never see anyone from the biggest to the smallest of role look out of place and that was what was going through my mind when looking for talent how will they fit into this and they don't have to fit in now and and he and like me and, and that is still something I I, I, I you know, it, it, I'm, I'm open-minded to it and whatever works, works. But I still have a little thing that if you're, you know, you should look a little bit like a wrestler. And it doesn't matter what you look like. It's not a bodybuilder, certainly not a bodybuilder look, or, but there's just a bit of, of how you carry yourself. How you, and it can come in all forms because there's people that do the exact opposite of that and it works. Again, I can't put a... a a certain explanation on this but you just should look like you belong in there as part of whatever we're trying to create it's and one so, of those things you, 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 when you see it you know it you you know it yeah and or, or, or the, the audience will tell you that the audience right. will tell you whether they like it or not right so it was but it does help if you start off looking half the part if you start off looking half the part and with you know, and the way you carry yourself and the way you do certain things, you, you're going to connect. Every second counts. Every second from the second you walk out to the second you walk back counts. It does, in my opinion, anyway. Some people don't have to worry about any of that. They can just walk out and then just get connected with the fans. A lot of people don't, right? You can have some of the best singers in the world can't put 100 people in a club and some of the worst will sell out an arena every night. And I'm not using that as a, a to knock anybody in wrestling. It's just whatever connects in, in the entertainment world, whatever connects, connects. And that's the way it goes. So it was, that that was my first weekend on the job and, and they were there. And eventually I started seeing them, you know, well, not eventually. I mean, I, I kept an eye on them for quite a while, but then they're, they're already going to you know they're in ring of honor and then they're going to, to japan and they're doing their own thing and they've got their own you know show on on youtube and i'm i'm like good for these lads you know like good for them but like they, they've figured it out you know and they, they figured it out on their own so i mean those are wise words and after a lot of hard work by the young bucks as well as yes. of course cody rhodes and kenny mm -hmm. omega and hangman page mm -hmm. as well as getting tony khan involved uh AW All Elite Wrestling launched on January 1st, 2019. All those rumors came true. All the hype from All In, from all these uh, little clues and hints that were dropped, the words we had about Jericho maybe joining or JR maybe joining, it happened on January 1st, 2019. What was, I know you don't get involved in pack mentality, you don't get involved in gossip. What was your personal reaction to seeing it happen? So this is where this can go a bit south, if you're asking me. I had rather a different year in 2018. Um, and from November of 2018, I ended up in hospital for the next eight weeks. And I thought I was going to die. 
and so and that particular year 2018 in, in early on in the year i'd had an accident in costa rica that caused me to have two bleeds on the brain lose 40 percent vision in, in my eye and um have three weeks amnesia then three months not allowed to have anything to do with anything but sit at home and wwe were very good to me and not only got me incredible help there but also um cut me off from because i would have been trying to get involved and i was i was trying to get in because i put so much time into and it wasn't just nxt anything to do with wwe i i, I you know for, or for wrestling in general because part of my job it was to know what was going on in all of wrestling and to look at all the talent that was out there. So a lot of my job is people was people sending me matches. And so I watch everything and not only the, the wrestling that's getting put out there, but people, once they got my knew that I was doing that job from, you know, to uh, 2011 or whatever it was or 12 whenever it was sending me matches and i would spend countless hours watching that everybody there's there's a lot of people can tell you that story don't need to, to me tell you i know there's a few people at aw that didn't come to to nxt or to the wwe that said you know have come up to me and said you were all you, you'd sent me matches and different things I have some different stories about that. So that's something else we can talk about at some time, but I would watch them. And because I always thought if I, they send me their stuff, if I watch them and not just watch them and go, Oh, oh yeah, no, I'm, I would watch them and say, well, maybe you would like, you should work on that. Because if you're trying to come to WWE, there's a certain thing that you need to be able I, I, I do know certain things about what they like and what they, they don't like. So maybe work on that, maybe work on this, or me just watching it from my point of view of maybe that doesn't make sense where you're doing that or you're doing too much of that, or maybe if you're doing that, try this or try that. And, and these are just suggestions. I'm not telling you to do them, just um, or safety sake. I do, there's a lot of things that I would do, but that takes a lot of time. So a lot of my time... I don't, and I don't think people in WWE know how much time that I used to put in actually doing that because I, I, that was how I was able to get a lot of people uh, there in, in, in NXT because I was watching everything and helping them with the promo. And it was promos as well, sending me promos. And there was only me doing it, right? So everything that went on, this is another thing that we, before we get to, to all this stuff, that's it. There's a lot of backstory to a lot of this. There was a very talent development was four people. The actual people in talent development. Then there was the, all the people at the PC who everybody has knew I mean, in a huge amount of responsibility to, with every talent that walks in the door. You, you, and everybody who, that who you, are the you, four people? Got, who are the four people? Right. So you got my eventually started off differently but but very quickly canyon seaman who was an incredibly good man he was brought on board by trip at triple h h said to me can you take care of, of canyon and so i said because he knew that i have a certain thing in wrestling because i've been around a long time and i'm, I'm a you know i get on well with people um, and I know a lot of people more so than probably a lot of people know, or I know somebody who knows somebody, but whatever it is, I'm, I can usually deal with people and, but I'm also a, not a BS merchant, right? Take this however you want to take it. This is one of the reasons as well that Triple H asked me to do this thing with him. I will never say yes if I think the answer is no. You can take that however you want it because that will go that goes a long way with me and, and it's also goes a long way right i want and he knows that i will say no i'm not gonna yes him in any way if i think it's not the right decision um 
but he also knows that I, uh, that's why I, he asked me to look after Canyon. And I said to Canyon on day one, I got on with him, but I said, look, you take care of all. I don't need to know any of the, the other nonsense as far as when I, and I don't mean it's nonsense, but as far as contracts, all the stuff that you have to go through to get into WWE, if you and your, the, the people who work for you take care of that, I will find the wrestlers and take care of that. Um, so, and, and he takes care of the athletes and gets the athletes and, and, and there was uh, Gerald Briscoe and, and JR was a, a part of that at the time and, 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 and numerous other people, but they're people that were all, you know, Ger Gerald takes care of the, the amateur wrestlers, but that's a, 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 you know, a major undertaking to, to get relationships. And he does all that. Then JR was doing stuff that there was all kinds of people doing stuff with athletes and, and making, the recommendations. There's a lot, a lot of people making recommendations for wrestlers, but that was sort of what I was doing all of. Uh, but also that Canyon didn't get taken for a ride by anybody because right. it's the wrestling business. So wrestling business, right? Yeah. So I would just anything to do with wrestling, just run it by me, please. And and he did, and he never got that was that's made him work great together. So that people. There was times when I wasn't around for different reasons, uh, different surgeries, different whatever, and certain times. But most of the time I was involved in a lot of that. So there was periods uh, over, over time when I wasn't um, for, for health reasons. But majority of the time I was. There was Canyon Seaman, there was Kristen Altman, who is Wonder Woman, and does an absolutely unbelievable job. And then in my time... There, there was Paul Fair, who, who's Canyon's um, assistant, and Camille Camille Levin. Uh, she was took Paul Fair's uh, where he left to go and work somewhere else. So we had an incredibly small team. Then you've got everybody at the PC, and they all know who they are, and they all know how much none of us. We all had to work together. There's no sort of group. I'm just saying that the, the actual core group of talent who were called talent development, which is the, the biggest part of WWE, but one of the smallest groups. And, and on top of all of doing NXT and, and, and trying to find new superstars for people, we were getting a lot of requests for a lot of things because it was all about selling network subscriptions and happy to do it. And I think people have forgotten about a lot of that or maybe they have to think about it. But the opportunities that were given and the things that we did in that time, if you go back and look, not only did NXT become what it became, but there was the Cruiserweight tournament. I don't know if anybody actually realizes what an undertaking that was to put that together, to get so many people from so many different companies from so many parts of the world with four people. I mean, you guys but had we did Kota it. Ibushi. You had all right. these people from everywhere. Right. It's just right. one little component of what was right. the developmental program. And, it, and, it, and uh, yes. And on top of still doing all that as well. Right. Right. That was just a side project. And right. we pulled that together. Like the UK, the first UK tournament, that got pulled together in two days. I was in Australia on tour with NXT in December. And I got a call. It was after the show, just finished the show in NXT, and I forget the name of the, the town. I think it was Brisbane, maybe. And we were out the back, and I get a call. Right, we're at, you'll have to come back from the tour now uh, tomorrow. You're going to have to leave to fly to London. Okay, uh, what? Yeah, no, no question. It's just, yeah, why? Because um, in two days, we're going to be at the O2, and we're going to announce that there's going to be a UK um tournament and it's going to be in january so it's, this is a i think it was just a bit less than a month and it's going to be in blackpool and i'm like oh right and so then i'm on the phone outside the building while people are coming get the last the last matches getting showered getting on a bus and i'm luckily i've been over to britain because i did my homework incredibly well in all of that period of time when when i apart from when i was injured or when, and even when I was injured, like it was constantly 
finding out who was doing what, who was working where, who was do, whatever it was. And then me calling round going, fellas, is there any chance that you could be at the O2 in, in like a day and a half um, and, and come in and, and, and get that together? And somehow managed to pull that off. And that went very well. And that spawned NXT UK. Um, and then the May Young stuff, same thing. You know, it, it, there was all these, these were things that we were doing with a group of, that the people at the PC, which wasn't anywhere near the size of, of amount of people that it is now, but you know, Matt Bloom and Sarah uh, Del Rey and and and, and Brookside, Robbie Brookside, and it's it just uh, and, and Norman and, and 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 you know, so many people that I, I and Ryan Katz and, and all these people, and we're we're all and 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 and. and, and just lots of people, but we, we, we you know, and I'm, I'm going to mention Dusty here because he was a big part of that at the time, but all these things that we, we, we were just going, right, let's, we're doing this NXT thing, which takes a full team to do, but then we're doing all these side projects as well, and we're making it all work, and we made it all work, and we gave a lot of people a lot of opportunities. Now, anybody who wants to sit there and knock anything or, or, they don't realise, or the, even sometimes the talent. Uh, oh well, I, I had this, or I had this, or this didn't work out for me. Well, you had an opportunity, and you made some money for a while, or you got to put a body of work down. Uh, if you just, if you were in the Cru Cruiserweight Classic, I met a lad last week at AEW who was in the Cruiserweight Classic. Classic, right? I haven't seen him since, but he was one of the original people and he was in one of the first round matches and he thanked me he said thanks he said that was the greatest thing in my life and I was like I, you know I'm glad you were part of it you know like I'm glad you got the opportunity because he was one of the few Americans that was actually in it and it was it's like wow and but other people doesn't matter what you want to think that some people got gigs from it and it made different st stuff same with the UK stuff right so these are different questions, but there's all this going on, right? So when we get round to AEW, which is the question, I'd been at a really strange 2018. Right. So there was three months of it where I, I had I was out of wrestling. Not only was WWE keeping me out of wrestling, my wife was keeping me out of wrestling. Because if this is why this boss. is like this, <laughs> right? This is why this is like this. I don't have any wrestling at my house. I don't have a shrine to myself. There's no pictures of me anywhere. I, that's I, I'm, I've been my wife, my wife have been together. We've been together since I was 17, and she she's not a fan, right? And in case so you're wondering, I just leave. Like you're hearing. Uh, yes, I'm that's sorry. my lizards. That's your lizard. So there's nothing wrong. Yes. with the audio. There's nothing yes. wrong with your no. phone. It is. They're trying to get out. Right, of their cages because they like to as soon as they see me they want to jump all over me i, uh, I can't do that because it'll knock all this equipment off so, so i apologize it will you, be there so she was, she was making sure that it was took my phone off me because otherwise it's non-stop emails from people trying to get a job with wwe or a job with nxt right my fuck it, it was just constant once people got my number and got my email Every person from everywhere in the world was getting on. I was the person they were getting hold of for the majority of it. So I'm doing a lot of that, right? So there was so much going on at the time. Again, I, I don't know. There, there'd be so many people in WWE. Who, why would they know? They've got there's so much going on there. They've got all these other things to do. But that's what I was doing. And between the, the few of us there. So I... I, I come back for a, I come back after this brain injury for a, a, a couple of months, but I wasn't quite right. And things, you know, I was still getting used to getting used to not having full vision in one eye, getting used to being not feeling well. But I also felt very ill, and that leads to later on in that year where they found out after many many years because it had been building up for years that I had something called a calcified pericard, which is the, the sac that 
is your heart is inside all your organs are inside a, like a skin well my, the, the one around my heart had calcified and was crushing my heart basically growing inwards and crushing my heart and i was having all kinds of problems with circulation and eventually they in the november of that year they i think it was the october they found out what it was and it'd be, i've been misdiagnosed for many years that i'd had different heart problems when it was actually this and there's they don't check for this for, for whatever reason because it's very very rare uh i was told that i had to go and see a, a doctor they said if you don't get this done you've got less than six months to live after i had the operation um they said once they opened me up and saw how bad it was and i have footage of what it was like because i've got the film when they cut me open they said that I, I actually what I'd have was less than three months to live. So when I did come back, I came back two weeks before WrestleMania in in two in in uh, 2019, 2019. Mm -hmm. 2019. I came back then, and again I'd gone through a lot. Right, um, I two days before the 2019 January UK show nxt uk i thought i was going to die up until two days before that show i mean that's why i remember that show something in my i've gone through a lot in my life that we can get over get around to in, in, in different podcasts and it's please don't ever think this is a woe is me thing because it's not it's just of life not. and it, i've just got on with it right life ha it's happens it's part, part of your story yeah and know? it's just part of my life i'm not looking for just no don't ever think i'm looking for woe is me so sympathy because i'm not but these are just facts and two days before that so for, for this entire time i think i'm gonna die I, I i've gone through things that i think thought that were bad but something i've always there's something inside my brain that's always been able to say you're gonna get by you're gonna you're gonna be okay this time no my brain was telling me you're gonna die i got my family together at christmas of 2018 my son was back from the UK. He was about to go to Japan and I, everybody came back. I thought this is the last Christmas I'm going to spend with my wife and three sons. Right. So, wow. uh, I, I that's was lying in hospital as, as, as that's, that's me out of it. Right. That, I, yeah, I think I'm just going to wither away. Gets, you know? Yes. So I, Two days before that, the, the NXT, the January 2019 uh, tournament, which was again in Blackpool. Two days before the UK um, NXT show in Blackpool in 2019, something in my brain said, I was lying in hospital with drips in one arm, drips in another, legs swollen up, in horrendous pain, all kinds of things going on, which is another story altogether, which I recently told on the on Chris Jericho's podcast. If you want, I'd rather you listen to that than me have to go through it all again, to be honest, because it was it's actually if I start telling it, it's pretty um, um, it, it, it's ridiculous what I got through. But for sure, something in my brain went, "You're going to be okay." And so at that time, uh, two days later, I watched the NXT UK show from my hospital bed in Atlanta. And I was texting with Triple H as the show was going on. And that was the show that uh, Walter Gunther uh, debuted on. And I was, I was like a fan sat there watching. It was nice to actually be able to just watch it and not be there doing stuff. Although I was, I was sick that I wasn't there, but in another way, Oh, I'm actually going to be alive now. Cause I, I was ready for, dying I, I really thought this is it i'm, I'm gonna die two days before uh, until two days before right i, I thought my life was over uh and, and was quite at, at ease with that i thought i've had a great life and I, i've just been, i've got to see my family at christmas that that was what i needed to to sort of settle life for me now it's time to you know go and feed the worms right and so the i came back in uh, I went down to NXT to, to just see how I felt, be very gentle at, at the beginning of, uh, it was like the end of February, 
my wife came down with me we stayed down there i did a little bit sort of went back but once i got out of hospital i was bang at it as far as getting myself healthy again and i did very quickly uh because i wanted to so then i started back to work and my first actual weekend was wrestlemania that year so everything i was doing as far as work there's, there's quite a few things now this is why it gets a bit distorted when you want to talk about the beginning of AEW. It, i was in survival mode i wasn't paying attention to much else as much as i'd paid attention in the last forever but especially in the last 10 years i was in survival mode so it was taking me everything i had just to get healthy and to be able to go back to do what i needed to do at nxt so with all this stuff happening with aw it was whatever anybody else was doing i was just going oh there's another company oh good it's these lads that i know and i know them all i know everybody that i was hearing was going there good for them i know there was some rumblings going on around me but i don't pay attention to that kind of stuff it's just i've i've worked for loads of wrestling companies i've worked you know sure. and i've also let me let's get this out of the way i have been in supposedly many wrestling wars right if you go back to the time that I was in England, there was a supposed wrestling war going on in the 80s in England. I, I don't remember being in any wars. Uh, there was one supposedly going on with WWE and WCW in the 90s. I, I certainly don't remember being in any wars. I know it looks good on documentaries, and it's depending what kind of a person you are. If you buy into the gossip nonsense world of whatever, and that's okay, because that's your perspective of life, you're in a war. It's just another day at work to me. So when I've heard, when I hear about these things, I, this is what this top topic of this entire subject is supposed to be about. When there's wars going on, there's another company, and okay, I work for this company. I'm going to do the best that I can do for this company that I'm working for, and try and get the talent to be as, uh, you know. As, as good as they can be so they can do better and make more money for themselves. That's my job. My job isn't to, to, to gossip or to worry about what's going on in some, somewhere else or who's going where or what. It's good for them that they're getting a living. They're making a living because that was my job. My job was a, a, as a talent to make a living. As a If you are a professional wrestler, that's what professional means. It means making a living as a wrestler. So it was another thing going on. So I'm, I have a very different view of a lot of these things. It was, again, would I have felt any differently if I wasn't going through all these health things? I, I don't know if I would. Yeah. Um, but I was dealing with all the, every time I was going home, I was having to just write, okay. That, there was a lot of things went awry um, in 2018 as far as talent. People that I'd been keeping up with um, Sammy Gravara is one of them. I, Sammy, me and Sammy were having a lot of things going on. Like I've been talking to him for a while, and, and Ricky Starks is another one. People I'd be, I'd met, and uh, I, I, you know, I'd, some of them had done tryouts, and some of them that did, but it wasn't their time, or there wasn't room for them, or or I was keeping in touch, like with right. Sammy, sending it, like calling him or he was sending me his matches and I was getting older people. When you start hearing about these wars and that, it, it's like, oh, right, okay. If you want to all get into this, it, it's another place to work and, and and it's good for everybody. Could, is it, have you got any room for Sammy? Whether, whether Sammy knows that or not, you know, I don't know. I think he does, but, you know, have you got room for him? And then just trying to, as well as doing all the other the hundred people that right. are else I'm trying to, well, thousand people. And then I'm not exaggerating when I say that. And the reason I know that is because last summer when things changed in WCW, uh, in, in, sorry, in WWE, and it was, okay, we're not going to be going with independent wrestlers or mm -hmm. wrestlers from different places now. I went back and spent the whole summer tidying up 
things that I, and these are all people that I, I, I had huge amounts of, of stuff and lists of people for, for every possible situation because of doing the tournaments, because of doing all these different things. I kept, and, and at every tryout, after every tryout, we don't have room for that person now, but they might be good for if we need NXT UK or sure. we might have another cruiserweight tournament. So I kept lists of everything and we and, and talent development kept lists. And also uh, they might be good for this. They might be good for that. A character or somebody who was a really good talker but didn't quite have any kind of physical skill or wrestling skill. Oh, they might be good for this role because we could have also what another part of my job was, you know, casting um, director or or Canyon was, you know, you could get you. We don't know if we're going to get a call. Not that we did that much, but you never know. Everything was let's just get it all in place in case. That was always our attitude. Whether anybody, the the, the connection between people in creative knew that if they could have called us and said, right, we need somebody to do this role. I guarantee we could have found somebody. We'd have had somebody on our books because that's what we did from day one was right. put people into category or put, that's why I could pull that cruiserweight thing off. Not, right. not when I say I, I mean all of us, not just me, right. but I, I, a lot of the times it was wrestlers I was dealing with. Or because you not we, only were it, recruiting people, you had yeah. lists of people ready to go. So, so at, at last summer, I went at any got moment and, and for when the right time was there. Adam Cole is a perfect example of that. Adam Cole did a, a, a and he won't mind me telling this, um, Adam Cole did a, a tryout at one point when he was, I believe he was 24, I think, and I could have the ages wrong here. And this was a call on Triple H, and he was a smart call, like, because I said, and, and everybody else around, we, all of the crew, everybody involved in this, this lad's as pro as it gets. He's got he's got everything going for him. Triple H made that call, which may sound a bit harsh at the time, but if you ask Adam now, he'll tell you a different story. He said, and he told me personally, he said, leave him out there because he was already working for Ring of Honor and doing all this other stuff and doing PWG. Leave him out there because in two years, there's something he's going to, the experience he'll get out there will make him 10 times better than what he already is, if not more than that he said keep an eye and i don't know if adam knows this but he said keep an eye on him and if he ever needs anything let us know like i mean i've done i've often i i've done that for him i i, I would have done that if he'd have needed his, I don't know, you know if i'd have heard he, he was down on his luck or something do you need some money or something i know because that, that's the way i i met him and whatever or, or you know maybe i can talk to such and such and get you see if i can get you a gig here or what, what, what whatever it was he said, take it, keep an eye on him. And then when the time's right, when we've got the right spot, we'll bring him right in. To Instead of coming in and sort of finding a, a spot for him, we'll bring him. Oh, I think there's very few people in history can say that they came into a, a hot promotion on top and left on top when he left for four years than, than Adam Cole. And and, oh and it's easy it's easy in this day and age because things are so there's so much going on, but you try putting that together to be a featured mm -hmm. player from the day you walk in to the day you walk out, it for four solid years is it? and 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 especially in the last couple of years when it was we were in a world of we, we, that 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 threw everything off every everybody right I mean it's just we we had to times that nobody knew what we were from one week to the next if we were all going to be alive or not right. But Adam walked in from day one on top and left on top on the, and never had a down period. That's an incredible run. And that was a call on age, being far smarter than me. But the, so I know we're getting off topic here, but a That's lot of fine. these things play into that. With the start of AEW, I'm just looking at it as, uh, again, I was out and I don't, I, I'm not stupid. I take, note of what's going on in wrestling but I, I can also especially once i was working <laughs> wwe i can just ask people look what's really going on to to filter out 98 percent of the gossip and the and the you know because 
and I'm probably going to get slated by everybody who writes about wrestling now. This is I, I'm I'm not an old wrestler who wants to knock on anybody. I'm not I'm not going to knock on anybody, but at best, at best, under the greatest circumstances, unless you are actually there, the person writing about this, you are getting secondhand information. Mm-hmm. We all know that. What's that thing you play? It's, I, I don't know what the, the term Telephone. is in this. Right. Telephone. So if you're getting information, it's and, and I know personally, because I've been involved in things and stories that have certainly not come out, and under the best, and under people who are excellent writers at this, that know about this job, they're not the way I could tell them. And they're not the way I remember them because they've been told by other people. I've said this on a few interviews lately, and this is the way sometimes to look at life. There's a great documentary on HBO about the Bee Gees. Whether you like the Bee Gees or not. That's that's a great documentary. I loved it. Loved it. But whether you like them or not, because first of all, it's incredible life. And if, if you're a wrestler, just to watch what they went through, you'll probably find connections of, what you've gone through to get to where you are. But at the very beginning, it's Barry, the one that's, I hate to say that, but it is Barry that's the one who's alive, right? Yes. Barry, at the very beginning, the first sentence of that is him overlooking the, 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 the Miami from his house and overlooking the bay and him saying, I've come to realize there's no such thing as truth because if my three brothers were here now, They'd all tell you a different story of what of, of our story, and that's what it is because you're seeing it from your eyes at that particular moment in your life, and then it gets told by somebody else and told by somebody else and told by somebody else, or you you see it from one set of eyes and you and somebody else sees it from another. So after a while, I could just go to a lot of people in WWE, right? Not, and I mean loads of people who I know keep up on everything or are, and I hope they don't take this the wrong way, but they are, they they very prone to to liking a bit of gossip. Right. Save me bothering with all that. What's actually going on? Right. Is there any actual, right. Or tell me something. Okay. If it, if that's important to my life, because otherwise it's completely wasted headspace for me. I've got a thousand wrestlers out there. Want to get a job here. I, I, I'm doing all this extra stuff trying to get them jobs. I'm I'm got people at NXT that all rely on me for something. Why do I need to take up any more of my headspace with a load of who's who's got heat with who? Right. That's right. just just wasting my time. It's just yes, wasting sir. my time that I could be helping somebody with because every second again last summer I went through all the people. There was 100 and it was 160 or 70 people that I'd been watching their matches for the last five years. And obviously the last couple of years, they haven't been able to send me hardly anything or the, not the best of stuff. But these are, a lot of these were people that were from before that. And I tried to find anything, something I'd still kept in touch with them um, because there was no, nothing there for them. And, but I used to think if I don't do this, who's going to do it? That's there's number one. Who's going to help them? Because right. again, I wouldn't be here if somebody hadn't helped me. If Two, not you, then who, it, right? Right. But also, if I do do this for them and they, it doesn't work out for them, they may pass that bit of information onto some younger talent that it might work out for them. Does that make sense? So Absolutely. by me helping somebody else, I can only get to whatever. So I went through all these people and sent them emails back. Look, I, from what I've seen now, I, this is not what anybody's looking for. So I actually, for the first time, said no, because everybody else I've kept kept up with over the last amount of years, and some have just quit wrestling or some have gone whatever. But I kept in touch with all these people and all these emails coming in to, to find out like in case, because I didn't know what, and I want, never wanted to not be on top of the job. I never wanted to go. I I, I haven't got anybody for that. Cause I, then I thought, I, then I thought that I wouldn't be doing my job. Right. So while all this stuff was going on, I'm doing all this other stuff. 
and I try to filter out as much gossip and nonsense as possible or people's views of whatever because it's taking up headspace of mine that I can be helping people with because my job is to help talent, right? Once they get right. to WWE or got to NXT, I'd help them. They, uh, you know, that that's another job, but it's getting them. My my man, one of my main jobs is to recruit talent, is to get them in there, mm -hmm. and then they're gonna maybe get time with me or me. And that another thing, the bigger NXT you become, the less time I had for, for as many people. So you end up spending it more with the people that are that are actually on the show. Every single sec second that I'm spent talking to somebody takes away from time that I'm talking to somebody else. Right. So uh, does that make sense? So it's a knock-on effect of constant thing. Mm -hmm. I want to, that's why when I talk now, this is why you're getting it. I want to go here, have all this. Right. Right. <laughs> have, have everything that I've got going on in here, but it's not that easy. I, I, I you know, I'm not a great trainer. I, I'm, because I've got too much going on in my brain. My brain works at a different level of that. So I, I can help you if you once you're you're at a certain standard, that's when I can start really helping you. Because if it's getting to it, it's I'm, I'm trying to do Z before or the Z as you say before you can do A. Right. You need to learn how to do A B C properly, or or even get up to to you know to, to probably you know P. If you get to P, then I'm, I can help you a lot with little minute details of things that can take you to another level. But, and so that's where everybody else comes in, you know, because we all have a part in this. It, so there's so much was going on at that time that it was just another place. Okay, it's, it's another thing. So, I, yes, there was all kinds of stuff going on around me, but I wasn't giving it much attention. I was trying to do my job, which was help. WWE. Something that must have caught your attention. Uh, when you're in May of 2019, you're back to work a little bit more. Uh, mm. A young man, maybe a little bit older now, but a young man that you saw at the very beginning of FCW that you said, okay, this guy. You said earlier that if someone can promo, you're halfway there. And you saw a guy named John Moxley back in FCW, and you said right away, this guy, this guy's good. And he made you look yes. good because you believed in him. And again, that's a story you've told on other podcasts, but to see John Moxley choose to let his contract run out, not that you get involved in that, but then to make that epic debut at Double or Nothing, where he comes through the crowd and he's now with AEW. I was there in person. It was electric. Okay. When did you see it? What were your thoughts about, well, you know, you don't get caught up in the war, but now you've got guys choosing, top guys choosing AEW over uh, WWE, and guys that you've invested some years in. Good friend. That's what I thought. Good friend. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, the, the last few times I'd seen him, in fact, I did see him that year. I'd seen him uh, at WrestleMania. Uh, it was it was a strange thing with me and John. And, and I, I, what I liked about John a lot was that he kept a mystique to himself. Um for many years and it's only the last couple of years and he started talking about himself but he kept a mystique about himself well he kept that mystique up so much that whenever because of a thing that we did in fcw years ago we never talked in front of anybody <laughs> That's, wow uh, uh, right and we very rarely got to see each other except for in front of people so for those we that would don't just know occasionally yes th this was a feud between the two of you and so what yes. you're saying for is lasted you kept for a it, year. We did you, we did you a year's it. program. Yeah, you kept we it did old a year's school. Program. You did not talk. You did it, not. It consort. wasn't. It wasn't. It, it wasn't that. It wasn't that that we purposely set out to do that. It just okay. became a thing right. that I would say things. But when we, I would say how good he was to people, or or what I thought about him occasionally, very occasionally. But whenever we were in public, we sort of. And I, maybe I was reading it wrong. I always thought that he wanted to keep a mystique about himself because he did mention that to me years ago when we were in FCW, that nobody has any mystique anymore. So I just played along with it. But we never really got to see each other that much because once he got onto the main roster, I was 
in NXT and I didn't go there that much. So when we did pass each other, it was occasional acknowledgement, but that was it. And that may sound like we were trying to do something, but no, we, uh, right. we that was the way it became. So have I, had, I, I don't think I've ever had two, probably in, in FCW, uh, I've had any kind of meaningful conversation with John Moxley, um, apart from having a laugh. We used to occasionally travel together when he was on the main roster, uh, me, him, and Cesaro, and and it was usually after me. They'd want to ask me about stuff, and I'd end up telling them stories. And so it was me telling stories and and, and the odd joke and stuff. So as far as meaning in in public, it, it was very just passing chips in the night kind of thing. Um, but I had seen him in 2019 when I went back for that when I, my first weekend properly back was WrestleMania and we went to blood sports together. And I was shocked when he got in there. I went downstairs to go there with Canyon Seaman because I wanted to watch the show. And John came walking down and, and Canyon said, started to, cause I, I, I was keeping that up as well. I wasn't talking to him in front of Canyon. And uh, he started talking to Canyon and he, he, he started talking to me and I was like, all oh, right. And he, we took, actually we did say a, a couple of things and he, and he shut up when there was other people around. So again, it's a weird thing, isn't it? But we went there and he said, Oh, can I get a ride with you? And so I went, yeah, get in. We went and we actually stood together. And while we were stood together, I was thinking, Oh, he's changed. Cause I, I don't know this whole 10 years or something. We've sort of avoided being around each other for something that happened that very few people ever saw, but it meant a lot to, to, to both of us. Cause it was a year long thing that was, right if you actually watched it all put together, was a very well-told story. Um, I was not in the best of health at the time with, with different... I had things building up, but I also had I'd had an extra injuries and whatever, so I don't look very good at certain points in my career. In fact, in all my career, but at, at that <laughs> time, I wasn't... Well, I, I wasn't wrestling that much anymore, right. and I was still training as much as possible, but my, I couldn't do any upper body work at all because um, I had, a, had all kinds of different things. My neck was withering away. I tore my pec, my, back, my other bicep, which was the other one was already torn. There was a lot of things where, and so I, I'm hesitant sometimes to say, go back and watch that because I don't feel like I, I did him justice the way I looked. I couldn't, re and I'm not making excuses. I just couldn't. I was still doing a lot of squats and stuff. So I could I could go in the ring. I, I had great, but I just didn't want to. But we kept that thing going, right? So it was, it, we, we went to blood sports and he said, like, I'm, I'm I'm off. And I was like, oh, well, good for you. You got to, right, here's something else. And I've had this conversation with many, many people. I'm somebody who's, well, you'll find out if you, if you don't know anything about me. And why would you? Why should you? You haven't got time if you're, you know, I don't expect anybody to know who I am, right? But I've, I've been through a lot of life and, I, and I've enjoyed a hell of a lot and I've lived a lot and, and that, that comes out, right? And I've done a lot of stupid things, but I have lived a lot of life. And I've realized that at the end of the day, the only thing that really matters in this life is you having some kind of happiness or contentment because money comes and goes. Your health is the, like comes and goes and, and believe me I know what it's like when it goes right we've mm -hmm. just talked about not long ago when you you know you think you're gonna die right mm -hmm. so when people <laughs> this is my former employers might not like this but it it is me and that's part of me and that's another reason again I'm, I'm, I'm very different cat to a lot of people in this job people have come to me and say you're not happy they're not happy I've tried to put that make it right if I can but if it comes to a point where there's nothing I can help them with or nothing anybody else can help them with to make that right, you got to do what you got to do. you got to, you know, you got to be happy. And he just said to me, I'm not happy. I'm, I'm going to go for you. Absolutely. So, you know, you, that was it. That was about as much of a conversation. Um, good for you. Right. Did you, um, did, were you watching double or nothing when that happened? No, no again, just... all, all that, all that stuff. It, and this is no, again, it's, people are going to have to take this into context of what I was going through in that, that time. I had a conversation with a, a somebody who I was 
pretty close to uh, recently at WrestleCon, and they were a, a little off with me. Well, they'd been like, I'm not going to say who, but they'd been let go in, in, a, in a particular time. And I hadn't contacted them because I usually contact the people I'm close with. And it was a miscommunication because I said, I'm sorry, you, you, you've taken it the way you see it. I was going home and literally having to just keep alive, right? So I, I, if, I, if I'm sorry that I didn't text you when you got let go, it's not that I was not caring about you. I was trying to keep myself alive so I could feed my family. And I was doing what I had to do at work and trying to keep everybody else happy. You're a grown man and, you know, I, what you could have reached out to me. I, I don't remember a, a lot of people reaching out to me. And I'm not going tit for tat kind of thing, but sometimes you just forget, right? I was in a different place. I was trying to keep alive and do my job as best as I could, but it was still a bit of a struggle. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So I, I, I wasn't watching. There right. is, I can, the, the only thing that I can say I failed at, at my job in WWE, doesn't matter what you hear, is I wasn't as attentive to some of my duties through 2018 and 2019. Well, with good reason. And, right. right. And it was because of me just trying to keep alive. So when I was at work, I could give it all I, I got. Because it, it is very, you know, the more you deal with people, you take on all their problems. And, and when you have a thousand wrestlers, and that might be an exaggerated figure, but it seems like it, trying to get a job with the company you work for from all from all over the world, right? And they're sending you basically, and, and there's no, I cannot, I'm not intelligent enough to have a better way of saying this quickly, but sometimes begging letters. I'm desperate. I need this job. And I'm taking that on board all the time. It wears you out. It's a very hard job to do. And I was trying to do that and keep my own health so I could, I could help the people that were already working in WWE. So every spare second of what I had in when I came back in 2019 until the day that I finished there, I was using to try to keep enough energy so I could go and help everybody that I needed to help. That's absolutely understandable, especially in your role and what you're dealing with at the time. I, I do want to ask, though, as it rounds out to October 2019, uh, we hear, of course, uh, AEW is going to have a TV deal. And yep. your product, the one that your friend that you that you've known for so many years has worked so hard to develop and the one that you're so invested in is now changing in the sense that it's going to USA Network. And it, it is obvious to all of us watching, it is going as counter-programming to AEW because they have those similar kind of work rate, you know, kind of wrestling. I, I don't know what to call right. it. I hate using that word because, you know, that's not a word you guys use inside the business. But it, it seems to me that as much as AEW or as much as NXT went between this world of developmental and third brand, when, when you guys moved to USA, things changed. How did it change for you, and what were your thoughts? Okay, this is where I am going to probably offend a lot of the people who I work with now. Again, I don't get involved in all the ins and outs and whatever. I'm, I was glad there was another company. My initial thought was, hang on, when, when I hear this counter-programming stuff, again, within there's a lot of things that when I initially hear them, I ever thought on. And then it changes over time, or I know more about it. But because I was just paying attention to what I needed to pay attention to, my initial thought was, hang on, Wednesday at 8 o'clock is, is our spot. Doesn't matter what platform we're on. Mm -hmm. Wednesday at 8 o'clock was NXT, which had been NXT from whatever amount of time on, on the network. So that was my initial thought. And everything after that was just, okay, right, let's just try and make this show as good as possible. So you that saw more, my, that, you, you honestly see it more as a reaction to AEW. No, I, I don't state. honestly, I, I don't honestly see anything. Okay. Uh, differently than that, that I'm telling you my initial thought. Right. 
Right. When I when I heard about this counter programming stuff and and stuff and and that was going on, but again, I'm trying to survive. I'm trying to have enough to get through my job. Right. 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 And so I know, all I know is now I've got to. We've got to somehow a show that is, and, and again, this is something that that you've got. I don't think people people seem to have blotted out what what NXT was, and I'm 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 talking about the company that I used to work for. So I, if people want to take offence to that with the people that I work for now, we built that show up off a one hour show mm-hmm. on the network on Hulu first on Hulu and well then on, the on Hulu yeah on like Hulu it was small and time. then the network mm-hmm. on the network. And we were selling out arenas mm-hmm. for, for takeovers from a show on the network and with a small group of people. Mm-hmm. When I came back in 2019, all of a sudden there was a, an extra huge amount of people at NXT that weren't there when I that I could remember because the, the year before I was going through all these different things and I was, uh, you know, whatever out with with brain injuries and, and and health issues then there was this content lab and there's all these extra people and then, then there's more talent there and then there's more everything there but see that that's things start going a bit wonky from 2018 with, with my memory because right. the next two years were very very different for me stay alive but oh yeah we we were doing arenas of and and that was another thing right, on the same topic to say how, how it, what AEW has done is, is like you, you talked about that initial uh, all in and the that was is that the, the initial pay per view again uh, all in was before uh, AEW was officially announced but it did set the template yes the right so all in was the right yeah. so what they did right it, mm-hmm. I'm going to go back to the rocks again here right there was a time in in in, in COVID. Right. Once we started on TV together, this is just me looking at it from occasionally, or people mentioning it to me, and me looking at different. And I, I it could be, and absolutely could be completely wrong here. But there was the everybody's talking about demos and stuff, right? And then I'm looking at the the actual difference every week of, of and, and I'm not looking too far into it. Because mm-hmm. within a short period of time, we're in COVID, right? And so it's like we, we, we're all lucky to be alive. And that, I, that's all I'm thinking. We're, I, we, we, we've got to keep things up. But I'm looking and I'm going, the difference seems to be, and, and again, this is just my brain at the time, whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. I'm looking and I'm going, this seems to be the amount, but the difference is the amount of people that the box have built their own audience up with their show that they put on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody else has ever thought that or mentions that. And I don't know if it's anywhere close to being right, but there was a, there was like used to be a 200 and something thousand difference in whatever demographic. Right. Right. And I used to think, Hmm, is, is that that, because I saw them building up their brands and, and, and other people, it's something else that people might not like, but they were the ones who did that. And then there were people jumping on their band, like whether they, they were just friends of theirs or whether they were jumping on it or whether they were just part of it. But there were people that were getting the rub off being on their show. For sure. And All In was right. and completely so, drew from uh, being the elite. All In was okay. I mean, right. plot lines so, and, and characters and everything. Right. So I'm looking at that going, I wonder if people realize how much they've got. This is just my initial thoughts of this. I wonder if they realize how much they have those fellas to think about this. So <laughs> that's, that's just my, that's just my initial look at this. Like everybody else is claiming things here, but I'm going, yeah, that they've all gone out and done the thing, but it's that show that sort of brought, they've got their own sort of connection with people somehow, because I think there was a lot of, definitely a lot of people watching we're all watching the same stuff for most of the time, I think. Yeah. Uh, so, again, I look at it from my my brain and not a brain of trying to overanalyze things or, or, or overthink things or 
whatever it may be. I'm just looking at it from my point of view uh, as an outsider. Again, I'd let other people take care of that. You're worrying about ratings. I I, I can't change that. That's not, it's, it's, I, I, I need to know about them, but it's also somewhat wasted headspace for me because it's not my job to, to make that change. My job is to get talent in here and then help the talent that are put into the creative. I, I, I don't do the creative. I used to sit on an, in it before it became a, a, when I came back in 2019, I, I, I didn't sit in on creative anymore. And I, when I did sit in on creative, it was just Triple H, one writer, different people, um, and then a couple of different writers and him and them coming up with stuff and me just sure. being a sounding board go, or going, hang on, what about that? Oh, yeah, okay. But not. I, I, I know I'm no good at creative, right? So okay. I, I was just there. But once I came back, it was, look, I'm, I've only got so much in me now and I need to focus on doing what my job because that again is another thing that is wasted. It's like if, if you, you're trying to put all this stuff together and then I come in and start going, hang on a minute, that, that can be very frustrating for anybody who sat and tried to put this together all week. So I, I thought I, there's a, by then there was, there was Sean and there was uh, Brian James in there, two very capable and very strong voices. They don't need me mm -hmm. as a soundboard anymore. So what? it was more that I could go and wander around the PC and see that somebody needed cheering up that day, or that they got, a, or hear that they got a problem, and go and take care of that kind of thing. Because I only got so much time, I can do so many things, or make sure the coaches are okay, or make sure that everybody's. Because I was that. I met that was another thing that I was for everybody. Everybody there it was everybody's, and Robbie Brookside is the same. Right, with everybody's uncle, aunt, especially Robbie's different to me because some unfortunate, not not unfortunate, but some people sort of kept because of the position I didn't do. It. Robbie has to look after a lot of people, everything, but I'm still part of that. And with everybody else, uncle, auntie, agony aunt, <laughs> shoulder to cry on, <laughs> right. which is all you can't just blow people off when you've got a do that right you've it's, it's, sure. it's, it's real it's real things it's, that it, it's it my might, life it might, man every single day yeah, that's my life you know it's my right and you've got to take care of people and mm -hmm. and it's it's all time consuming so I, I i just used to look at those little things like that and, and go oh i wonder if that's their their audience that they've built up and then the rest is people going back again and people can tell me all the stats they want this is just my view of what was going on at the time in my head because I'm having to deal with a lot going on in my life. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, you talked about what people forget what NXT was. Now, I had I have a 19-year-old son, and we went to all these wrestling events. We, we did not miss a Brooklyn takeover, sir. We, we did not miss Dallas takeover. And the most special show we ever went to ever, to this day, our favorite show ever, was NXT San Jose, which was the first big show you guys ever did at 10 o'clock at night and and it was just this amazing scene and when you look at AEW now the fan base the wrestling mm -hmm. the reactions how big of an influence was NXT on AEW I'd be foolish to say that it it isn't very similar <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's it's uh it, it but because a takeover crowd it, it, is it, much more it, like a a is much more like an AEW crowd than it is a WWE mm. crowd, right? Yes, very much so. Yeah, yeah. So it, it it's similar. I, I, I'm not going to get into it again because if I say anything now, it, it's oh, okay. it's going to be people who are going to go, well, that was a PWG crowd, or that was sure. Ring of Honor's crowd, or it, it's it's no. It, that is is another one of my views. Any the people who think, oh, all they did was take people from Ring of Honor or from PWG. Well, there was a platform for them and a bigger platform to make a bigger, a better living. If you're <laughs> so, so uh, I'm very f fan friendly. Like I try to, you know, be as open-minded to, to fan uh, um, feedback as possible. But if you're of the mindset that 
by by us or NXT or WWE or AW now taking your favorite wrestler away from you so that they can make a better living for their family and and get more exposure and do all and you, you think that the the companies the big companies are, are the devil for doing that maybe you need to check yourself in the mirror because that's what happens in life you 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 go out to start off in this profession to make a living or to be what you want to be in it right which is usually to get as much exposure or to do the style that you want or wh whatever it may be so any time that that's happened and that happened a bit with the UK with NXT UK and it, it you know AW doesn't seem to get that kind of thing but WWE does uh but so oh, you're taking away all our stars oh I'm sorry that I'm taking them away and giving them an incredible platform uh to to have far <laughs> better training than they've, they've ever had and ask any right. of the people that have worked there and get looked after when they get injured and right. not have to worry about getting paid that night and getting a right. check in the bank every week. And yes, it might, you know, things have changed in the last couple of years, but I'm sorry if that's happened or, you know, that they're, they're actually making a better living now. I'm really sorry that that offends you, you know, but that's mm -hmm. what being a professional is about. Right. So it's, um, yeah. So yes, the, the, there's obviously similarities, but and that could have grown up around any, NXT definitely was a, uh, um, a, a a huge change, and, and um, as far as the the the, the crowd uh, on a bigger level, you, you know, getting to right. to see that that's the, a, a, like a, a modernized style of, of wrestling, yeah, right, like a PWG style, but in front of a large audience type deal. Well, it was the it was it was. Um, a style right and and the right. pwg were great at capitalizing on that and and right. the, but it, it, if you see if you say that then you're going to be a, offending the ring of honor people or you're going to be right. offending the people who work right. for evolve or the right. people who work for for different companies right it's it's just everybody has as everybody in the last 22 years has had a part of that mm -hmm. because it's been 22 years since ring of honor started or, or well 21 years or whenever right so there was people around at that time, Brian Danielson being one of one of them, you know, at, at the same time that I met him, you know, there was Brian Danielson, there was Brian Kendrick, there was Tom Carter. Those three guys, Tom Carter is somebody who's, who's sort of like doesn't get any sort of credit anymore, but Reckless Youth. They oh, were all doing sure. this, right, doing all this yeah. stuff. I, and and I, I was lucky enough that they all ended up in my, my lap like uh, mm -hmm. and i'm like oh great they helped me just as not, none of that nonsense about I, I did anything for them they did as far more for me than i did for them because they mm -hmm. made me think they made me think a lot and, and and pick my brains and go back to things that i'd seen all over the place because once i'd been in america for a while there's only so many people i could do the actual stuff that i could do really well with right i could do i could mm -hmm. i could adapt to most styles but there was only so many people I could actually just go out and do all the wrestling stuff that became popular in the, the early 2000s, well, late 1999, because of the tape trading people and because of seeing some British wrestling. Well, I could do a lot of that, but you can only do it with people who can actually do it. And I, I, I was by then I'd got my own style of very different things, of influences of all kinds of different countries and, and, and you know, European style, well, British style, and then a European style, and bits of Japanese stuff, and and all kinds of stuff, and so it it it, it was all there's all kinds of styles. What it was was NXT gave a a, a big platform to to that style, and mm -hmm. it was already happening. It okay. was already happening in many places. Yes, for sure, sure. I've never I never ever read reviews about wrestling shows. Never. Why is that? because I like to make my own mind up about what I think is right and wrong. <laughs> and then I add in, I add in other factors, which is the people who I'm working for, what do they want? Or is it just me looking at it? Or now do I add in a fact again, this is what's kept me around and still in this job because I'm open-minded. That is a distraction and wasted headspace to me. 
getting it, trying to, you know, what's the word they use now? Influencers, right? It's just right. made up load of nonsense. That's that. Bullshit word, but, yeah. but people can, people can, uh, that can affect their lives. I try to keep a completely open mind. This wrestling bubble that, that you hear about, I, I've always mm -hmm. think that, that I read one of my success things is because I stay out, try to stay out of it as much as possible. I have to dip my toe in it, but I try and stay out of it. So I want to know who's working where. I want to know what's going on. But when it comes to reviews, if I think it's worth watching, I'll watch it and then I'll look at it, right? And then I think, okay, then I'll, if I'm whatever particular company I'm working for, how then that, that the next thing that goes on in my mind is what do they want? How, how, how is this going to work in their world? Is it going to work in their world? Um, when I used to go to say, I wish I used to go, people know I used to go to PW, PWG a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, not, not a lot, but I, I used to go. We all seen the watch pictures. Every, every, right. Well, I would watch everything stood up on eye level of with the ring. Because when mm. you're sat down, you're seeing that view of it. If mm. you're sat there, right? So I'm stood eye level. Now, I know eye level is camera level. So when people used to, I, I don't go and say, when I go there, anybody that, I would never go up to somebody and say, you know, but perhaps you should be doing that, right? In my new job now, it's not my job, right? I'm talent, but people are coming up to me and say, asking me things. I'm saying, well, look, certain things that I, me personally, I like to see. I'm not going to say that here because it's not for public knowledge. Um, you have to earn that spot. Mm. And then I'll start giving you my different views on certain ways of doing that. They may come up in time, but, sure. but I knew that, if I saw somebody and their stuff was missing by a mile and they come up to me, I said, maybe you want to work on getting that right. Mm -hmm. uh, because if I recommend you for a tryout and you do that match and they're filming it, and then the people who, who have the absolute final decision on that, see that and see that you're missing by a mile uh, or see that when you walk through the curtain, you don't look like you're there to beat somebody. You, mm. You're off to, you, you're already putting yourself that, that that can be enough to turn somebody off you like that. Mm -hmm. So there's, a, there's all these different ways that I look at. I'm trying to get you a chance, right? Once you get, once you get the chance, then maybe, or if I see you do a certain thing and I see you do it dangerously or not, not quite not. Have you ever, has anybody ever showed you how to do this? Oh no. Right. Right. Cause that's a lot of what's happening in wrestling. It's nobody's fault. It's just that the people who used to do it night after night after night have got less and less over the years. So people watch tapes now and they copy it and they or they get shown it by people who've never actually done it. And so that I, I, I see people do stuff, especially that European stuff. Has anybody actually showed you how to do this properly? Oh, right, that's easy. Isn't it? Yeah, or that's, oh, that is, is, ah. So there's things that I can help with that. But most of the time I'm trying to get them, or I was trying to get those people to a tryout. So that they could have an opportunity to get a job to get to, to make a good living. So I'm watching and saying, well, let's work on maybe tightening that up, or maybe you want to work on this, or maybe you want to walk through that curtain like you own the place and you're ready to beat. Or I'm watching you as that your opponents coming through the curtain and you 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 you're not looking at them like you want to kill them because you're portraying a professional fighter, and if you're a professional fighter with instinct surely you would be looking at, at that person because they can stop you earning a living. And it's just giving more giving people mindsets about stuff or to work on stuff was what I was doing when I was there to try to get them to a tryout to get them a job. So that's that out of the way. Well, it sounds like to me this story and this podcast is going to be a unique one, an unusual one. You have a lot of things to say and you have such a wealth of experience and a wealth of just a lifetime of wrestling. Uh, I don't think we need to go to the subject anymore because it sounds to me like you never really got swept up ever in kind of a us versus them mentality at all. You were more focused on your job and focused on the people who were getting work at the new company. You're good for them because I'm, I want everyone to be successful. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what you, you do, right? I, let me just backtrack a bit. So I've been through supposedly a lot of wrestling wars, one in Britain, uh, there was stuff going on in Germany with different companies. There was all, there's always something going on somewhere. 
I was in South Africa in 1992 and I was working for one promoter and I was in the ring and as I was in the ring, I'm wrestling, I hear a commotion going on in the back of the crowd. And I look and I see the promoter I'm working for chasing another promoter that I'd worked for a few years before there with a machete. <laughs> okay, now that's a war. That's, right. that's a little bit more of a war. Right? When you've seen that, <laughs> when you've seen that, when you're 23, right. all of this other stuff pales in comparison, right? When most of the, and you know, you, you have heard stories of people back in the day. I'm not one of those people. I'm just telling you the way it is. I, right? I used to be like, all right. You know, I used to also live in another world of, of where there was real things going on, you know, and, and I was just, knew a lot of people in different things where there's real stuff going on and, and, and working in, you know, nightclubs and stuff. And when you've seen stuff or been around stuff like that. When well, uh, Mr. Regal, it has been a pleasure and we have a lot of stuff to talk about. So yeah. many stories from WCW to your mm -hmm. days in England to, uh, of course, NXT, Real Man's Man, Goldberg, WCW, returning to WCW. Uh, so many things. The commissioner role, you've had quite a career, and I look forward to talking to you. And about we never even we, we we never even touched the subjects of this today, did we? Because we got into so many other things. We still a lot of stuff from what from just this topic alone. So there well, we go. people, and of course, next week, join us for our second episode where we are going to talk about the real man's man. When I say real man's oh, man, Mister yeah, Regal. Mate. What <laughs> this is going to be, this, this may be a very, this may be a very short, a very short time. Right. Let me just say that happened in a time, time frame, like, which will, which will probably make for interesting talking uh, about what was going on, but that only happened for five weeks, I believe, right, or right. six weeks. But no, and no yet, one forgot that, it. No one forgot it. Nobody's forgot it. So <laughs> if you want to look at that, that song and that character, was one of the most memorable of all time. Sure. It rates up there with the Yeti and, and all those things, <laughs> the, the, the one when they were, you know. Uh, so it, it, it's, there's like, it really didn't leave a mark, but it, I can't remember it. So it, it's, um, you're going to have to jog my memory on some of that stuff. So anyway, okay. Well, we'll definitely do our best to do that. Of course, look forward to watching Mr. Regal and the Blackpool Combat Club every single week. Oh, yes. Week on AEW television, some of the most intriguing television, some of the most entertaining television, and some of the best matches you'll see. And of course, you can follow uh, William Regal on Twitter, at Real King Regal. You can follow me, at Matt Coon Music, on Twitter as well. Uh, Mr. Regal, did you have a good time today? Yes, I did, thank you. Thank you for having me, yes. E excellent. Thanks for anybody who's, who's listening or watching. I would listen, don't watch, because it's, it's not a pleasant sight. Believe me. <laughs> well, it is a podcast. Most will be listening. And we hope you listen to us next week on The Gentleman Villain with William Regal. Thank you.